nations all over the world to generally uh, generally tell about the microbiology scopes all over the world and basically we want to go for a glo global collaboration for this uh, noble cause so uh, i would like to introduce uh, everyone to our speaker today and uh, to this sunday talkie session so we have Mr. Ryan H. Sethiawan, and he's working as a junior researcher in the National Agency of Research and Innovation, Republic of Indonesia. We are glad to have you, sir. He has also worked as a research assistant, extending his assistance to Professor Endang in the field of mycotoxin, lactic acid bacteria, probiotics, and gut microbiota. He also adds to his valuable contribution working as lab practical assistant in food microbiology, food engineering, and food analysis. He has completed his bachelor's in agricultural technology from Indonesia itself, and his master's in nutrition and food science from University of Reading, UK. He also adds to his name many qualitative and high impact publications, and a patent on processing of powdered beta glucan extract from white oyster mushroom and its endometric uh, purification. Today, Ms. Ryan will be talking about a very important topic. And uh, Ryan, sir, I'm from Solon, Himachal Pradesh. And Solon is known as the mushroom city because we have uh, here the numerous wild varieties as well as we work on the type of typical culture varieties of mushroom ranging from the edible ones. And also, uh, we, were re we are recently working on the type of shiitake mushroom. You must be knowing about its functional anti-cancerous properties. So yes, we are well equipped with this mushroom. And we are very excited because Mr. Ryan will be talking about the edible mushrooms by prospecting as the functional food ingredient. So over to you, sir for highlighting us about this uh, recent and very valuable topic because mushrooms are known for like histories. But yes, we need more valuable information regarding it. So over to you, sir. OK, thank you, Dr. Netika. It is really an honor for me to be uh, invited to this event. Everyone can hear my voice, right? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, audience, please right. give some response. Like you can just okay. share the emojis. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. I will try to. Uh... Sorry, I will share my screen. All right. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, sir. It's visible. Edible mushrooms. Yeah. 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 All right. So. All right. First of all, I would like to thank you for uh, Dr. Arvind Desma for the invite invitation and for the Dr. Netika Takur. I also want to uh, shout out to uh, my colleague Dr. Uh, Bara Nesrawan and to give the opportunity for me to give a presentation uh, in front of you all. So let me introduce myself. My name is Ryan. Uh, I'm from the Research Center for Applied Microbiology the National Research and Innovation Agency in Indonesia. It is the, the government institution, the largest government research institution in Indonesia. And we um, the division of applied microbiology. And today I'm going to present the topic about the edible mushroom bioprospecting as a functional food ingredient and yeah here is the outline of my presentation it will cover up from the first we are going to talk about the introduction i will give the edible mushroom overview and the condition in indonesia especially and uh, we're going to see the functional food trend and the edible mushroom potential as a functional food ingredient and later on, we're going to talk about the current research that has been conducted in our institution about the beta glucan from Edi Indonesian edible mushroom, current research, and the upcoming research. And I will also introduce you some uh, functional food product that has been developed by our institution. And everything is based on Indonesian edible mushroom. All right. So. As we all know about mushroom is belong to kingdom of fungi. So that 
uh, sometimes people think that a uh, mushroom is a microorganism, but sometimes they, they think that it is a plant. In Indonesia, we have a cultural collection that collecting the the cell of the mushroom, all fungi including, including mushroom. But at the same time, we also have herbarium that collecting the a lot of specimen of mushroom in Indonesia. And most of the edible mushroom is uh, belong to Basidio Mikota, but few of them are Asco Mikota. And that's uh, and they producing a macroscopic fruiting body that can be seen by naked eye. This this one that become uh, sometimes confuse people whether it is a plant or is it a, a, a microorganism. And there are a cosmopolite organisms, so they can be found and basically anywhere, soil, litter, wood, and that's probably because they are a heterotrophic organism, and they're actually a subtrop that. They grow from decomposing a non-living organism, and some of them is wild and some of them is cultivated. Uh, in Indonesia itself, the cultivated mushroom can be classified as an agricultural product. Meanwhile, the wild mushroom uh, is classified as a non-wood forest product because they are basically found in in a forest, right? And in 2019, the market size of the mushroom in worldwide can reach 33.5 million US dollar, and it projected to be to be to be increasing in 2027 into 53.3 million US dollar, and it showed that the 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 mushroom has an economy value that really really high. As we can see in the worldwide, China right now is the main producer of edible mushroom. They can produce 80.9 billion ton per year of mushroom. And it's a very far uh, amount. We have very, very far different between the second largest producer, which is Japan, that can only produce 47,000 uh, ton per year. But India has a very good uh opportunity because they are right now they are the sixth largest producer that can produce 182 82 uh thousand ton per year while in indonesia we are in the 18th largest producer right now and well we, we know that edible mushroom consists of very a lot of uh various kind yeah. and one of the most uh, produce right now is uh, the sitake mushroom or lentinula, followed by pleuritus or oyster mushroom, and then auricularia or earwood mushroom, agaricus or portabello or button mushroom, and then flamulina, the enoki mushroom, and fulvariella. And as you can see that each kind of mushroom sometimes has a different uh, suitable condition to grow, like uh, lentinula or sitake mushroom is not really suitable in Indonesia because of um, sitake mushroom usually grow in cold temperature, in chill temperature. Well, it's not suitable with Indonesia that has a tropical warm climate. Oyster mushroom, earwood mushroom, and pedristraw mushroom is more suitable in Indonesia because of that reason. And, and so we're not when now we're talking about the functional food trend so right now uh functional food getting more popular and more popular and that's probably because of these several factors people getting aware about their health and it really uh their health is really influenced then of how they have the diet and then they are also more realized that uh, treating their disease it will be more costly than uh, prevent it. That is why they need a functional food product to support their uh, healthy diet and prevent to get a disease. At the same time, manufacturer or industry see it as an opportunity to diversify their product, to keep struggling in the market. So they also want to uh, increasing the development of functional food in the market and or, or in the uh, people. 
and also it also back up by our scientific improvement that our research is getting advanced and advanced and it can be a scientific proven or it's giving a new thinking or new innovation toward the functional food and also because our population is getting aging and aging as we all know the life expectancy of uh people time right by the time and so it create a problem that can be solved by a uh, food terminology between the function functional food and nutraceutical well there actually a different uh, definition between functional food and nutraceutical even though they have the same purpose which is to reduce the risk of getting a uh, current disease or having a or according to the bureau of the nutritional science of the Directorate of health in canada functional food has a preference that similar to conventional food they are consumed uh, as a part of usual diet and they give a nutritional function to our body but when when it comes to the transceptical they usually an isolated or concentrated form of food uh, that is uh that did not give the nutritional function but they have a similar uh health benefit between functional food and nutraceutical and oh this table will uh, illustrate more clearly about the difference between functional food and nutraceutical as we can see functional food is uh more like a uh, food or ordinary food while nutraceutical uh its presentation is more likely to a food supplement but both of them have a same purpose which is to prevent getting a disease that's the main difference between nutraceutical and functional food and medicine because medicine is used for treatment or cure a specific disease and we're going to talk about edible mushroom potency as a functional food product so edible mushroom has been consumed for years and years and it has been known for its nutrition and its health benefit uh, edible mushroom is can be used as a alternative protein a source of protein and compared to animal based protein uh, Edible mushroom has uh, some opportunity because edible mushroom cultivation is more sustainable compared to uh, animal-based protein. They can be grown uh, vertically, so it will require less area. So you don't have to uh, cut down forest to be to be uh, modified it in into a farming too much because of we, we can we can minimize the space and also it is known that edible mushroom uh can be grown using uh agricultural waste to use a substance like sodas and then straw and everything and then they also contain a lot of nutritional values such as dietary fiber mineral and vitamin and uh, since they are known for the immunomodulatory immunomodulatory property they contain a lot of bioactive compound uh edible mushroom can be also used to our prevention against infectious disease but one of the main uh properties or characteristic that we want to focus on for our research is about the prebiotic properties of edible mushroom so prebiotic properties is a, a prebiotic is a ingredient that cannot be digested by human uh, upper human digestive tract and if they cannot be digested the prebiotic will reach the colon and it will be specifically uh, utilized by beneficial bacteria and it will ferment it and producing metabolite that is beneficial for our body such as short chain fatty acid 
and why we focus on the prebiotic that's because uh, it's habitated by a lot of or million or trillion of micro or mouth in our uh, eyes but the densest population of microbes in our body can be found in gut microbiota in our intestinal or our gut and we found that the composition of the gut microbiota uh, will eventually affect the metabolism of homeostasis of our body they have an hypothesis that if our composition of gut microbiota is dominated by good bacteria considered good bacteria it will give uh, optimum health to our body as well and the gut microbiota composition is affected by various factors such as uh, the uh, stage of life the gut microbiota in uh, infant in baby in adult in elderly they have a different pattern and also they affect they are affected by diet what they are consumed what their lifestyles and what the medication that they are taking on and we one of the most uh the, the most uh suitable method to modulate the gut microbiota into a better composition is by giving a prebiotic so that's why we try to propose this edible mushroom as a prebiotic to increase the health of human through gut microbiota composition modulation and here is a review that we have published in 2021 about the research the potency of edible mushroom to be to be a prebiotic um, agent and most of them is uh, only done in in vitro and in vivo research using animal model and a promising uh, result but the, the 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 experiment in human or human clinical trial has not connected yet and but it is it is a very a huge opportunity to us if we if we we see the the, the result is promising we can continue to, and further it to more complicated uh research more advanced research i mean and right now we also uh, drafting uh, another review that uh, that showed that edible mushroom can be used as uh, obesity treatment uh, through uh, modulating the gut microbiota. We found that by consuming uh, a polysaccharide from edible mushroom, it will change the gut microbiota and uh, improving the obesity traits in 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 the uh, animal product uh, in animal in and now we are talking about what the current research that have been connected so right now we are doing a research about edible mushroom beta glucan beta glucan is uh building blocks of edible mushroom uh, cell wall and it actually con uh, they have a lot of functional and a lot of bioactive uh, active bioactivity so that's why we have to extract the beta glucan from this for uh, this kind of mushroom these are the most common mushroom in indonesia as you can see they are suitable in growth in the warmest in warm uh, temperature so we do the extraction and we purify it and we got the beta glucan extract and then we continue to the further assay. Uh, the assay that we have done so far is probiotic activity, antioxidant and antibacteria, anti-cancer, and we also want to do a uh, optimization for it for the beta glucan extract production. For the probiotic activity, so we have supplemented the beta supplemented the beta glucan in the growth media of probiotic and a pathogen. So we can see that this beta glucan can be specifically utilized 
by beneficial bacteria only, but not in the pathogen bacteria. So it can be a simulation that will happen in our gut. And this research is right now is being uh, reviewed by a journal. Um, but I would like to give some sneak peek of the result that we found that one of the one of the extract has a strong prebiotic activity compared to the commercial prebiotic that can be found in the market, which are uh, fructooligosaccharide or FOS and inulin. And another research that we have done is we explore the antioxidant activity using the beta carotene linoleate model method in E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus. And this research has been published in 2020. And also we are we observe the anti-cancer activity of the beta glucan. We test it against the breast cancer and uh, liver cancer. And we're still working on the manuscript yet. And I'll also giving you a sneak peek of the results. So we, we see that the beta glucan extract that we have have um, uh, anti-cancer activity against not it, it cannot uh, it the uh, it doesn't show on anti-cancer activity against uh, liver cancer. Well, even though yes, the, the the activity is not yes yes. Hello. Um. Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes, Shani. I have one question. Sorry, yeah. I have one question. Sir, can you please tell me the procedure how to extract the mushroom? Uh -huh. How to extract the beta gluten you mean from mushroom? Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, for the extraction, we extract. Sir, your voice is not clear. Actually, um, uh, uh, Rian, sir, Rian, sir, we are facing glitches. Sorry? Uh, we are facing some glitches, like your voice is cracking. This glass cracking? Yeah. Doing the extraction. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Maybe you can chat. In is there any chat chat box that you can chat? I mean, I don't really. Yeah, probably you can chat it. I will. I will. I will continue to your question after the presentation. Is that all right to you? Sorry, because I cannot see. I'm scared. I cannot see you, but. I can only see my screen, but cannot see you. Is that all right? Okay, pa. Lanjut, 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 pa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we can. Uh, Shivani, uh, sir, can answer your question after the presentation is over. Ha, okay, man. It's okay. Okay, 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 sir. Rian, sir, you can continue with your presentation. Sorry, pa. Lanjut, pa. Lanjut, uh, you lanjut. continue your presentation, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I, I think I will continue the, the, the presentation first, and then I will continue with discussion, if that's all right. So yeah. when we do the, the research about edible mushroom, uh, we there is an industry that uh, interested with our research, and they're a quite huge uh, industry, and they have a large capacity of production and they need our uh, beta glucan extract product that is why we need to increase the 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 production we do the optimization during extraction so we are using microwave assistant extraction to modify the previous method the conventional one and we found by using this uh, method we can increase the yield of the extract we can increase the purity of the extra and it can be rich in short period of time. 
and all this method all this method have been uh, registered in a patent in 2022 so for the for the next research of edible about the beta glucan edible mushroom we going to do the chemical structure elucidation because we hypothesize that um different bio uh, bioactivity of different beta glucan from different source is probably a result of the different chemical structure so we're going to um, correlate the chemical structure and the bioactivity and also we're going to increasing the uh, extraction scale as you can as uh, we has i have said before that there is an industry that interested to adopt our uh, technology or our product and then we are going to talk about the functional food product that ha we have uh, developed from edible from edible mushroom. Uh, the first one is a uh, complementary food. That is a powder form that you can add water and then. You can give it to your babies. It is designed for the babies uh, above six months, six months to two years. And we have uh, we designed it is nutrition to be um, fulfill the requirement of the uh, complementary food in Indonesia. And it also fortified with oyster mushroom, so it has a con it contain beta glucan and dietary fiber and antioxidant activity and as and then the next product is a vegetarian burger as i have said before that it has an opportunity to become an alternative for a non-animal based protein right and then we have uh create a formula of this burger and the method to credit it and we have registered as a patent in 2022 and it is uh, way better than the ordinary uh, non vegetarian burger because it contains less fat, it contains fiber, it contains more glucose and polyphenol, and it has antioxidant activity. And so in 2022, uh, as you can as you know that the coronavirus is emerging and it affected uh, all the aspects in our life, not only in the health but also in economic uh, to can be struggling uh in the pandemic era so we 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 ask them to join us to create a vegetarian meatball that is made from edible mushroom that not only uh but also have an uh economy value and we also creating a uh, mushroom noodles so we we fortify the noodles with the with the mushroom and it gives not only giving the beneficial uh, health beneficial such as beta glucan and polyphenol antioxidant and dietary fiber they also giving a better properties it, uh, uh, it can be cooked uh, more uh, faster than the ordinary uh, than non because we believe that they contain uh, a lot of health beneficial and then and right now we still have the pattern and in the future we are going to add more products such as a kombucha kombucha is a fermented tea using a scooby scooby is a symbiotic community of bacteria and yeast and then we're going to make a fiber drink because we found that 
the the fiber content is quite high, and we also want to create a mushroom protein concentrate uh, that can be used for multiple purpose. So in conclusion, as the functional food trend getting suffered and favored, the mushroom holds an abundant potential to be developed uh, as a functional food product. They can be used as an ingredient or in the final uh, product that can be uh, released to the market directly. And right now, we have done the bioassay exploration about the beta glucan from mushroom. And soon, we're going to do the character, character structure, chemical structure uh, elucidation and uh, upscaling for the production. And we have created a lot of uh, various um, functional food product, and we're going to add it even more in this year. So at this opportunity, I would also like to acknowledge my college as our team from the of, from my institution that we work together to receive all this result. Sometimes we only focus on the scientific novelty, but we some the society need and the input has been really precious for us for giving me uh to be to conduct that a better uh, better research and that's my presentation i believe that we go, we are going to have uh the discussion after this and if you uh, at this opportunity i would also like to uh invite you to have a collaboration we we we're really open to have collaboration from indonesia to uh from India to Indonesia. And if you want to uh, contact me, you can find me through our to my email or my WhatsApp. So thank you for the uh, opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Pa, Mr. Pa Rian, sorry, saya satu persen, yes. ada. Pa. Uh, yes. Papa ada pakai uh, ada bahan untuk uh, naik uh, glukan di mushroom pa? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, are you using any sorry. precursor for increase the glucon, glu, glu, uh, beta glucan production in mushroom no. or uh, only by nature it is growing? No. Uh, we uh, kita uh, we're not using any pre for the beta glucan extraction so right now we still okay. focus on the wild type of the i mean no, not the wild type, the cultivated one so we, we're not engineering the, the 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 mushroom yet so we yeah we only discovered it from from the our cultivation for the beta glucan production okay okay sorry sir sorry sorry mr Ryan. i'm asking the questions uh for for increase the beta glucan content in mushroom any specific mm -hmm. substrate we need to be used or any no any any substrate we can for example in indonesia the main mm -hmm. substrate for the mushroom production may be the uh, palm oil empty fruit bunch right palm oil if you are using uh farm fiber palm uh, farm uh, palm fiber fiber for the uh, mushroom oh, yeah. production First, right substrate yes yes yeah okay for if, if mm. for example in india we don't have the uh, palm fiber we have uh, only mm. for the rice uh, or sugar bagasse sugar can bagas as a oh, substrate man. in this substrate whether uh, we can get the same amount of beta glucon or any uh, substrate substrate uh, we need to get a high value of beta glucon in the mushroom pa yeah yes it, that that's probably uh yes that's interesting i mean we it could be a uh, different subset will give a different effect to the beta glucan content because after all the beta glucan is the wall of the mushroom and by using different subset can affect their growth and their different uh their um can have a different structure or morphological call different yeah they, there is an opportunity that different Sub that will give a different beta glucan content. Yes, thank you. Yeah, welcome, 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 pa.
uh, one more thing pa one more thing pa the beta glucone uh, uh, the extract extraction of beta glucone from the mushroom uh, how much percentage uh, uh, for example the mushroom having the glucone content 1% example i am telling example uh, in some substrate you are getting a 2% mm -hmm. so which level for example if it is this amount 1% glucone content uh, in mushroom is be feasibility or if it is more than 1% will be a visibility for this uh, uh, product pa. for example i am telling again sorry mm -hmm. if you go for mm -hmm. a glucose extraction from the mushroom okay if the least amount is a one person if more than a three person it may be available in the glucose content in the mushroom so which one uh, least amount person it will be viable to make this project pa? Mm -hmm. um. I, I thought that so you asked end? about the, the, the yeah. I, you asking, oh, sorry, can my voice is unclear? Is my voice is unclear? Uh, okay, uh, Ryan, sir, it's it's perfect now, but it is cracking sometimes in between. Oh, okay. okay. So okay. it's yeah. perfect for now. All right. Yeah. So, uh, um, Mr. I think Mr. Parta, what what I I received that Mr. Parta asking about uh, the content of beta glucan for each edible mushroom, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah, we we found that each kind of mushroom that we have test the five the five edible mushroom that we test they contain a uh, different uh, concentration of beta glucan. For example, uh. That mushroom for auricularia in the in beta glucan then in fulvaria but we found that even though fulvaria la contain a lower beta glucan they possess a higher anti cancer activity against the breast cancer so that's something that we interested to be further say is there any more factor than affecting the uh, bioactivity instead of its concentration and that's what we are trying to do in the further research that we want to uh, elucidate this chemical structure because we think that probably because the different structure of beta glucan in those two mushroom. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, hello, Rian, sir. Yes. Hello. Uh, sir, I'm Dr. Nagenjan. Yes, hello, Dr. Uh, Raipur Chhattisgarh, sir. I am also working in same field. Uh, sir, I am just asking mm -hmm. uh, how to uh, highest amount in liquid culture, sir. Is uh, it possible, sir? Liquid culture. Oh, so for liquid culture. Hello. Sir, I think liquid yeah, culture only the mycelia will be grown, not grow only in the crop. Yeah. Because the mycelia yeah, we can only grow in mycelia. Yeah. By liquid culture, we can, yeah, we, by liquid culture, we can do, uh, we can produce the mycelium, but the mycelium itself, they call uh, beta glucan. And it's, uh, we, we, we have planned to do that, but we cannot do the research in 2020 because of, uh, because of the, pandemic so we cannot go to the experiment but we 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 have that idea to do to do the liquid culture from from mushroom because it can be shorter time as as we know like in growing mushroom in liquid culture it probably takes seven days to 14 days maximum because yeah yeah so actually we're working uh but mm -hmm. sir we have facing some issues sir like uh we can't get maximum amount whatever what our uh, targeted amount so is there sir any suggestion mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes yes we uh that's a very good idea and we 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 have ever came up with that idea 
before but we think that because the remaining of uh mushroom cultivation is existing right now and they are they they, they think that um they they cannot sell the mushroom for the long period of time right so it will be stale and it will be disposed to from market for only several days so i to um the mushroom that can, that have not been sold to be to be better glucan extract and um, so that's what we are more focused in right now okay thank you sir thank you thank you i will yes, connect to with email sir yes, thank you very much i would i would really uh yeah i would uh, will open for your uh further question and uh maybe i can answer the question from the uh answer box uh, the question box yes sir yes sir right. yes sir show sure. yeah from pastina de bragede and she's curious about the percentage of increasing yield so uh from our so when we are using the when we're using the conventional method it can only producing um around each gram of the mushroom we can only we can only produce around uh 20 percent so it's only the the yield is less than 20 percent like fifth uh only 15 percent and after we do the uh, optimization uh the yield is increasing uh into sorry around oh it, it can increasing 20 percent more than the conventional than the conventional uh method so when it when it when if only the, the initial yield is uh let's say 20 percent it can increase it by 20 percent as well and it also increasing the uh purities of the beta glucan and and how you check the anti cancer activity from dr vijay kumar uh the anti cancer activity we we have a collaboration with our college and uh, i cannot tell you the detail specific method but we 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 create a serious dilution of the extract and then we test it using the cell line uh by by, by using the Mm, cancer cell that we that we propose the the one is the breast cancer cell and the other one is the hepar uh, liver cell liver cancer cell and we see that uh the the pro proliferation of the cell is uh, of the extract and we compare it with the uh, medicine of the antigens that of the cancer as a positive control and we see that even though the, the, the activity is not as high as the medicine uh, but we 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 thought we think that it can be used as a preventive uh prevent prevent as a prevention instead of um as a medicine and from pinky do what is the producer to make a mushroom extract so at first we using the conventional method which is uh, by boiling it basically it's just boiling the 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 dried or the powdered mushroom and and we then separate the the sample and the water or the supernatan we uh, purify it using enzyme and then we got the beta glucan after we freeze dry it but we uh, came out with the idea to increasing the we optimize the product the extraction we using the microwave microwave assistant uh, micro assisted extraction and it giving a better uh yield and better characteristic of the beta glucan extract and for the from the sifani sing how to check the antimicrobial activity so we actually uh, make a serial dilution of the extract that we got and then we um 
soak it into a, a dish that made of a pepper and the dish of pepper we put it in the agar that is called the dish diffusion method there actually there is also another method to 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 see the antimicrobial activity so we, we made an agar that have been inoculated with target microorganism for example uh, in this case we're using e coli and staphylococcus aureus and we put the dish that contain the extract in the in the in the agar and there will be a clear zone around the extract the higher the antimicrobial activity the bigger the the that the clear zone means that the, the, the cannot be grow uh in this area so the bigger the uh the clear zone the bigger the antimicrobial activity and with I say any cost effective standard for quantity and determined purpose and um, from oh it's from Mr Nagrendra yeah we, we're using the assay that is provided by Megazyme and that is the the only resources that we got from for, for now for beta glucan assay we are we have an so one of my colleagues also have an uh experience in doing the beta glucan assay using uh, H, uh spLC or high performance liquid chromatograph but uh there's also another um challenge to using that method because some of the chemical is quite rare in indonesia so from uh right now we can only uh depend on the the essay that is produced by megazyme and from rajas kumar pandi hello and yes thank you oh from uh how did you also check the gene expression well from now we haven't uh do the gene expression we, we it's outside of this project we're going to do the gene expression uh, I don't know, the gene that producing the beta glucan so we uh, we are trying to uh, uh, identify which of the gene which of the gene that is expressing the beta glucan uh, beta glucan uh, production and but uh, we, we, we have kept, came out with the with that idea that's a really really good idea but uh, unfortunately we haven't done that yet and it's, it's really interesting if we can um collaborate to do this research about this gene expression of the edible mushroom and uh, all right from oh yes it from dr vijay kumar uh the papers of anti-cancer oh uh, unfortunately the pep Oh, Mr. Liang, sorry for your voice is a blackout. Okay, yeah. your voice is blackout, pa. Sir, I'll just contact Mr. Liang. Mr. Liang. Your voice is the blackout, yeah. Uh, he's rejoining, sir. Yes, we answer. Yes. Oh, sorry, this connect connection. I'm really sorry. Uh, 
uh, I'm I'm sorry, I cannot uh, see the question. I think the last question that uh, I remember is about the cultivation from Rajesh Kumar. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I'm really interested. I also really interested in the galaxy by Indica or milky milky mushroom because it is known that it is it uh, native in India but they are really suitable to be to be to be grown in the warm climate and i think it will be it will be a uh, potential to be grow in indonesia because uh, because of our warm climate and i have also seen the milky mushroom by my own eyes and it is uh, i mean it's huge it's it's similar to sitake mushroom it's i think uh, it's really potential to be used as a food or any functional food, but I haven't checked the uh, bioactivity, and that's really interests me. And for yes, the email, uh, I will I will type my email in the chat box. You yes, can... we answer. If you can provide your uh, email in the chat box, it would be easy for everyone who want to collaborate yes. with the research and all. No? yes yeah i will i have sent so the, has provided email. his email mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. uh, like write to him about your research problems and collaborations yeah all right uh, oh. oh about books and oh, so for books for about mushroom and mycology i um uh i cannot give you any recommendation i'm really sorry uh, anusha kurokami because actually my background is not mushroom uh, it's not about mushroom biology my background is uh, in the food science and technology so i'm more focused on how the mushroom uh, being utilized using functional food but uh, you can email me and i will uh, reach you to expert in mushroom in my my uh in my institution his name is iwan saskiawan and i think he will give you a lot of uh added value for you thank you and yeah yes so thank you anyone with uh, more queries oh yeah oh uh mr bodhidharma yeah join whatsapp group that's really interesting Michael Isia. Oh, okay. I'm so glad can uh, find some Indonesian. Yes, sir. We we have another question from Mita. Uh, she wished to know regarding increasing the yield of oyster mushrooms. Uh yeah. Do you mean that the increasing the uh the fruiting body of the mushroom or the increasing the yield of beta glucan? I mean, if you mean that he has specified uh, oyster mushrooms, sir, increasing. Yes, sir, both, both. She's oh, asking yes. for both. Yeah, if if you uh, want to increasing the uh, oyster mushroom production, uh, I I'm not really uh, focused on that result. The increasing the 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 fruiting body for the production for the uh, cultivation, uh, but uh, I. Later, I will share the, my email and you can find the expert in that particular area. But when it comes to increasing the of beta glucan, uh, it can be done, but by optimize the growth medium because it is the is the backbone of their cell wall. Uh, by 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 increasing the growth of uh, mushroom, I believe that it will also increase beta glucan content yeah but when it comes to the increasing the bioactivity of the oyster mushroom that's that's still we try to discover through the chemical structure elucidation so it's actually a very long it's very long run and uh, we're really interested on that thank you yeah and dr Vijay kumar yes thank you i would really uh looking forward for the collaboration uh but probably so yes uh, mr Ryan has already posted his email uh, in the chat box 
and for mm -hmm. further queries you can contact riyam sir and he'll be happy to answer your questions and queries and yes. riyam sir it was a really an exciting session and i think we had a huge rush of participants today so participants were very eager to learn about this functional functional food concept and yes when it comes to mushroom everybody is very keen to learn about mushrooms so thank you so much and we'll be like hearing you in the future also we'll be inviting you for the more talks as we do on sunday talkies and thank you everyone and you can just uh, mail to riyan sir for collaboration and your research interest particularly so thank you thank you everyone keep glowing and yes, keep growing yes, and thank you riyan sir once again and um, special thanks from microbiologist yes, society yes. india thank you so much bye yeah, everyone take care Excuse me, excuse me, madam. Please, please, yes, one minute. Sir, one minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, madam. Uh, madam, Mehta was asking for how to increase the mushroom yield. Yes, actually, madam, if you maintain the CN ratio, if you CN ratio, if you maintain proper on the substrate, the yield will be a uh, very big. For example, the was the mus any mushroom, the fruit body developed based on the how much uh, nutritional value uh, presence in the substrate. Okay, because uh, from the solar we are, we Generally, any plants or any microbes or any fungus that can get the energy from the solar. But for especially in the mushroom, we don't give any solar light for that one for the protection of mushrooms. So based on the substrate nutrition, the the amount and the size of the uh, you know the mushroom uh, the the crop will size will be bigger. Which I want to tell you. Oh. Uh, thank you, sir, for adding up your inputs. So anyone with any additional inputs? So I think we should close now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Riyan, sir. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.